he asked me, what is going to be your ranking goals for your career? And I said, well, I would be happy, I think, top 15, top 20. In general. <laughs> in general, in my career. For like the next 10 years. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and then, then six months later, it's yeah, like already so, done. So then the guy called me and was like, so what now? <laughs> what do we have to do? Ciao, Matteo. <laughs> ciao, ciao, Alicia. <laughs> we are here at the, on the center court of the Ultimate Tennis Showdown. How did the body react to getting back to competition? I, I'm pretty happy also about that because I was injured in the first months of the year and then I was ready to compete again, then they, <laughs> the virus came. And how was your quarantine? Could you practice? Yeah, actually I never, I never stopped practicing. That was the, the goal with my team. I spoke with them. They were in Europe, I was in America. You were in touch with your close people in Italy? The situation was really tough there. Yeah, yeah. I was, I mean, I was obviously calling them every, every day. Luckily, they, they live, most of them, they live in Rome. And Rome wasn't that bad. The situation wasn't that bad. It was more the north of Italy. And, uh, but you know, you're still worried. When they were telling me they were fine, I was feeling mostly good. One was fine in the end. At the beginning of 2020, top 10 player now, you're one of the guys to beat now. Uh, do you feel different with that? Do you have different expectations for yourself? Do you feel different expectations for, from other people? I would say that it's more for me because I'm always like aiming high. And I did like, I think a, a good, really good season last year and I didn't expect it. So, First of all, I had to figure it out, I had to realize what I did, and then I put some more goals with my team. How long did it take to realize? When you're on the tour, you know, like when you're on the tour, you're feeling good, you're playing, and you don't, you, you don't have the time to stop and think. Day by day, I'm realizing and I'm really proud of what I've done. So you kind of surprised yourself last year, but what were your actual goals and expectations for 2019 when you started the season? He asked me, what is going to be your ranking goals for your career and I said well, I would be happy I think top 15 top 20 in general <laughs> in general in my career for like the next 10 years yeah exactly and, <laughs> and then, then six months later it's yeah. like already so, done so then the guy called me and was like so what now <laughs> what we have to do um, so yeah I didn't expect it and I, so I did you reschedule new goals now <laughs> yeah now it's like I'm top 7 <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. I saw you were doing other sports when you were little, judo and swimming. You also have a, a brother, his name is Jacopo Berrettini. He's yes. 21 years old, he's ranked 491 well, you studied, in the yeah. world. I studied <laughs> last night. <laughs> um, how did you come to tennis? Thanks to him, actually, even though he's younger than me. And all, of course my family, like all my grandparents, all my parents are playing tennis since a long time. They're not, they weren't professional, they're not professional. but. They are members in tennis clubs and they were bringing me, you know, when I was really little. I didn't really like tennis when I was four, three, you know, when they put the small rackets in your hand. Yeah. And you, I wasn't really a fan. That's why I started with judo, with swimming and other sports. You liked swimming more than tennis? At the beginning, yeah. Then no. <laughs> then that's, then <laughs> no, why, I'm why, that's why I'm choice, here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I'm here. And when I was eight, I think, I was swimming, I was doing judo and my brother, he was five and a half, he told me like, come back, you should try again because I think you're gonna like it. And I trust him and I was like, okay, let's go. I tried and I never stopped. So thanks to, to him also. So many times, he's more positive than me sometimes. And so, so many times happened that I was watching him and I was like, okay, I have to be like him even though when I was uh, So younger. he was your inspiration? Yeah, and he's saying the same, <laughs> the same thing, but I think we help, we help each other a lot, especially when we were younger because we were going holiday and we were playing each other. If you have a brother, everything comes more naturally and you feel you're feeling more comfortable. So you don't have a natural positive mentality? I, I work a lot about, uh, with that. When I met uh, Vincenzo, my coach, the first time I was 14 and he was calling me the radio because I was talking all the, point, all the time, all the time. I was talking, thing, yeah, yeah, I was like missing and, and uh, like, uh, telling bad stuff to myself that I wasn't good enough. So he told me like, look, Matteo, uh, I don't know if you're going to make it like uh, tennis wise. You have to grow, you have to do a lot of stuff, but I'm 100% sure that if you're going to have this mentality, you're not going to get that. So 
we have to change it. And was the toughest part about, yeah, you say backhand, forehand, serve, it's nothing. Because for me, it was coming from inside. And I work on that, and people normally now, they tell me, like, you're pretty positive, but inside, sometimes I want to kill myself. But you have to act like, you know, you have to act that you're positive. So I work a lot on that. You're still working on it. Now I'm asking you a question. How many matches you feel great during a year? I, I mean, mean I, I would say it's like, 10% you feel really good, 10% yeah. really bad, and then the rest is just <laughs> average that you have yeah, to deal with. Exactly. And if, so, you, if you make it through those matches, this is when you're good. Exactly. So, yeah, you have to have a great forehand, great backhand, great serve or, or whatever, but at the end is how you approach the match, how you approach the tough moments that in every match, even when you're winning like easily, they're gonna, this is going to be a uh, tough moment. And I think without that, I wouldn't be able to, to be here. I realized that I won the match because I was mentally ready to win the match. And at what point did you think of becoming a professional tennis player? I always had the, the dream, you know, about it. Like, I was thinking like, yeah, I want to be a tennis player. But when I was 10, 11, you, you know, you're playing and you're, I don't know, you're thinking, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Roger, I'm Rafa, I'm whatever. Like, I think I, I said to myself, OK, Mateo, you can be like a professional tennis player when I was 20. So from 17 to 20, you were playing juniors a little bit. Oh, yeah. And you I, didn't think of playing professionals. So it was more like you're trying to see how it goes. Yeah, or... I wasn't really feeling, it, you know, like I, w I was feeling that I was improving a lot day by day. I was 50, I think my best ranking was. I did third round in US Open. I mean, pretty good results, but nothing like great. And I was thinking actually to go to the college. We had a meeting with my family. They kind of want, want me to go, but it was a great opportunity. And I said, oh, okay, guys, uh, give me two or three years. I want to try and then we would see. Do you feel it on the tour that you had a different path from most players? If you think about Rublev, uh, Aliasim, Shapovalov, all these guys there, they, they were good like since they were 12 and I wasn't that good. Um, but I mean, it, everyone has different, you know, way to go to get there and I had my way and I was getting injured a lot so by the end it's how you get there. <laughs> you're a dating professional tennis player from Australia, Ayla Tomljanovic. What role does she play in your tennis? <laughs> you guys talk it's, about tennis a lot. That's the together. thing, that's the thing. Of course we talk about tennis but when we hang out, when we spend time together, we, we try to, to think about the other part of you know, the life because tennis is a, is a big part. We're practicing all day. So we go for dinner and we don't speak about tennis. And I kind of like it. So, she, I mean, since I started dating her, I really started to play well. So uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, she I, has to be a big part I, of it. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say in front of the cameras, but I mean, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, mean I, would, I, have, I have to admit it. But yeah, uh, it's important to have a person that understands what I'm doing, that I'm traveling all the time. We're not seeing each other a lot. Unfortunately, or likely, during the quarantine, we had the time and we had the chance to spend time together. I, I'm feeling well. Yeah, I'm feeling good with it's her. It's a good balance for you. Yeah. <laughs> so you just said the advantage of having a tennis player girlfriend. Is there any disadvantage about having one? Can we switch off the camera? <laughs> <laughs> it's no. Just between you and okay. me. <laughs> um, no, I, th I think it's, like I said, it's great, but sometimes it's happening that maybe she expects that I act in a way because she would she's feeling that she she would act in that way but in tennis court i'm, I'm talking just in tennis when you court. play together or when you watch yeah. her when i practice i like to uh, to have fun to make jokes to trash talk a little bit and she doesn't like that <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand that not everyone is thinking like you think let's, let's say i'm a guy i'm better than her i don't have the i don't know the voice to say like now you should do this and that you should uh, enjoy more it's her way and I have my way and it's fine like that that you don't have to cross the line so now you're trying to be serious when you're on the court with her exactly and it's so <laughs> tough and it's so tough but I, <laughs> I I have to do it for the I mean for the good no of the relationship shot, yeah, no trick no, shots no 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 slice she gets so upset when she, I play feel, the slice. she feels offended because it's like you're playing around with her maybe yeah she when I I hit too hard she's complaining and then when I hit not enough like you know you have to put effort like like hit it and I was like yeah but then you're gonna complain so it's always find the balance and it's fine it's like in life exactly <laughs> exactly what are your short-term goals now first of all starting playing ATP tour again would be what's would your be schedule nice. what do you think about playing US Open we have a couple of months 
still. So I'm gonna see how the situation is gonna uh, evolve in in US. It's now it's it's not that not that good, and it's tricky. Um, of course, uh, traveling, quarantine, no quarantine, coming back to Europe, we have to see see a lot of stuff. So I didn't I didn't make make my decision yet. I, I think I would play, but uh, it's not official. US yet. Open, you mean, or the, the yeah, yeah, the, the US Swing. US I, swing. I think I'm gonna play, but it's not 100% sure. I think we have to take up care about health first. For me, for my team, for my family, for tennis. Now I think it's it's not the first priority. It's the second one. It's something that locked down the world. So it's it's not something that we we can talk like easily, you know, about. And I think we sh should trust the scientists, we should trust the doctors and listen what they're saying and figure out what we're going to do. What are your overall dreams? It's, it's always a great question because I mean, if you ask me the same at the same time last year, probably I would have said like I don't know, doing same is in a, in a slam because I was dreaming like I don't know. And now I cannot not say that would be would be something like lifting a big trophy, like a slam or, or maybe Rome. That is for me, it's like my city. When I'm playing the center court, half of the people that are there, I know them. It's a good, I mean, crazy tournament for Italians, especially for me that I'm from Rome. But yeah, lifting a big trophy would be, it's going to be my goal. <laughs> what do you still have to improve in your game to reach those dreams? Everything. Everything. <laughs> I mean, I'm kidding, but not not that much. I think once you get to this level, there are not big things. Of course, everyone can see that my forehand is better than my backhand. At the same time, I think it's it's about small things. You know, it's about maybe having like better percentage of my serve, playing with my backhand a little bit deeper, or my forehand a little bit more winners physically i have to move better i can move better i'm working on that of course like i said at the beginning my mentality has to improve like i'm trying to do all the time first sport you tried probably soccer in italy <laughs> first racket i think my first racket was a yellow prince uh, yellow and green prince I was probably like this, like a ping pong racket. <laughs> I was so small. I remember that then my brother played with it, you know, like clothes. When you're growing up, the clothes, my yeah. clothes were going to, to him, like the same thing. Same thing with the racket. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you hit? I don't remember the first time I hit, but I remember the first time I quit. <laughs> I remember my mom was watching me and was so windy. And I look at her, I step out from the court and I said, I don't want to play anymore. She was like, okay. <laughs> like, what do you want to do? I was like, okay, I want to do something different. Do you remember the first time you cried after a match? Probably the first time I lost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first time, no, but actually I have to say I wasn't a big crier. But at the same time, I, I would say that I am a sore loser. Like when I lose, like I don't like it. And I remember so many times I was in a, such a bad, bad mood. Still to this day? Yeah, yeah. I don't like to lose in anything. If I'm playing soccer, tennis, if you're playing everything, I don't, I don't want to lose. So you're going to be closed up for how long after losing a match? I remember first time uh, I played Australian Open in Qualis. I lost with two match points last round. And I was like by myself for, I don't know, three, four hours without talking, without eating, without doing anything. And I remember my coach, he called me and was like, so what time are you going to practice more? And I was like, no way I'm going to practice. Like, you, you're crazy. I was kind of upset. I was like, no way. You get in. I was like, what? I get lucky loser. And my mood changed in a way. But I, I can't stay for a couple of days, like, in a bad mood if the match was really bad. Was that your first slam? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, it was, yeah, my first, I mean, draw. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your first tennis idol, Roger? Roger, mm -hmm. yeah. You ended up playing him last year at Wimbledon in the ATP finals. How was the experience? You asked him how much you owed him for the lesson. Yeah, him. Could you put aside the fact that he was your idol on the court? Yeah, that's the thing. I think that's why I did four games, I think, in three sets. <laughs> like fourth round Wimbledon for the first time, center court against him. I mean, I was happy to be there, but too happy to be focused on the match. So I was just enjoying. Too happy to think of winning. Yeah, and um, of course, I was upset after the match. Of course, I, I mean, I didn't like the way I played, but I accepted because, I mean, 
I was I remember that I was watching TV and cheering for him. We did a warm up together in 2015 in Rome and I was 19. I was about to play a future and and I was shaking. I remember the warm up. So imagine if I had to play against him. It was a goal for me playing against him in that atmosphere in that court. I stopped cheering for him when I when I saw him in the same draw. Like I was in the same draw, so I was like, okay, now okay, I cannot, I, I cannot cheer for him. Like I'm in the same tournament, so I cannot do it. <laughs> so when you were on the court, you actually thought of this again, like picturing yourself watching him as a yeah. kid. Yeah, of course I was watching everyone. I was watching Rafa, I was watching Novak, but I don't know how he's playing. Everything looks so easy, and I don't know. I, I just like him, and he he just something for tennis and above tennis. So, but I'm happy that I had the opportunity to play against him. About Novak and Rafa as well, you've had the opportunity to play all the members of the Big Three in just about six months. Unfortunately, you couldn't win a set, but how is the... Did you feel a big difference playing them? They are great, but the great thing is, I think, is they are all different, you know? Roger is crazy in that thing. Rafa, it's like his attitude is it's unbelievable. He's foreign, he's lefty. What I, I always liked about him was that he doesn't care if he's like 5-0 up or 5-0 down, the attitude is the same. If a guy is coming and watching the match, you cannot tell if he's winning or he's losing. And that's, I think, the, one of the greatest, greatest things that you can have in this sport, especially. Novak, I think I, I didn't play bad against him, but I lost one and two, I, or two and one in, in London. And I was serving 70% by the first serve, and he was returning like unbelievable. So I just accepted that he was, he was better than me. And... Um, but yeah, you felt you felt you feel something that is different, you know, like you feel that you're playing against the history. You're not just playing against a guy that is like a human. They are human, but at the same time for me it's something more. So that's what I was feeling. Non tennis idol? LeBron James. Oh. Yeah. I mean I love NBA. I, I started following it for him. I, I just like the way he plays, of course, but I like the way he acts, the way, what he's doing also off court. Do you remember the first racket you broke? Whew, probably I hide it somewhere because I didn't want my parents to see that. Yeah, I think I was playing against my, my first coach and I was so upset, but I didn't want to break it. I just I hit it on the, on the floor and I, I pretended I wasn't, you know, like it wasn't broken. I was keeping the and, and the guy was like, I heard it. I said, no, 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 it's good. And the, the racket was like, you, you could see it. Yeah. So you hit it afterwards. Yeah. Well, that's it for me. Thank you so much. Thank you, merci beaucoup.